Good evening. Welcome to our service tonight. Will you join me in our call to worship? The word Monday comes from the Latin word meaning mandate. This service is dedicated to the mandate of Jesus to his followers everywhere. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. We know that we have the death of our life because we love our brothers and sisters. Whoever does not love my life is dead. Our reading tonight, responsive reading from the psalm, comes to us from Psalm 116. It is one of the psalms of ascending that, that believers would recite on their way to the temple to worship. We love the Lord because he has heard our voices and our pleas for mercy. Because he finds his ears to us, we will call him all along his good. What shall we render to the Lord for all of his benefits to us? We will lift up the cup of salvation and call the name of the Lord. We will pay our vows to the Lord in the presence of all of his people. We will offer God our sacrifice and giving and call the name of the Lord. We will pay our vows to the Lord in the presence of all of his people in the courts of the house of the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Let's pray together. Holy, Holy God, God, we are caught up between two worlds tonight. We see the world is shaped by the ministry and life of Jesus. We see the world that is shaped by the effects of sin and darkness. We live in the world responsible for his death. We come to glimpse your kingdom in the midst of human weakness. We come to get caught up in the hope that your promised judgment will bring to our world. Receive us at your table and bring healing to our lives. Amen.
seated. Jesus revealed God's love to us in life and death. In his last meal with his disciples, he gave us a new commandment to follow in his way of love and invites us to confess our failure to follow this way and experience renewal. Let us pray together. We ask you, loving God, to be gracious to us and hear our prayers, where we have resisted the call to fully give our lives to you in faithful devotion, forgive us and strengthen us, where we have failed to love others as you have loved us, chosen to harbor bitterness, resentment, and envy, refused to be servants, forgive us. faithfulness is unfailing. God's mercy is new every day. God's love endures forever. In the remembrance of the Lord, to bring all the to save our lives, to be servants to those who are broken, to love others as we are loved by already dead. 
And when he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the corpse to Joseph. And Joseph bought a linen shroud, and taking him down, wrapped him in the linen shroud, and laid him in a tomb that had been cut out of the rock. And he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. And Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, saw where he was laid. Would you pray with me? <clears throat> Father, help us to understand what went on in the burial. Help us, Lord, to understand where all of those who follow Jesus are at this point. Help us, Lord, to realize tonight the amazing story of the death of our Savior and his resurrection to come. And help us to see it through our meal shared in the Lord's Supper tonight. We thank you for these things. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if I had, if I had to say in the church calendar, we would call this Monday Saturday. Okay, because we're going to talk about the days as we've continued in our series and what went on on Saturday. Tonight we peek into the world and the reality, really, of two worlds. We live in a world that is. We understand that. We see it. We hear it. We feel it. We exist in it. But we also live as part of the world that is to come. We can't always see that. We don't always know or we're not always aware that it's around us. This idea fits very easily within the sequence of the scriptural story with which we find ourselves tonight. Mark has been meticulous to share events happening each day of the week in the last week of Jesus' life. Everything has a purpose. Everything has something assigned to a particular day. But Saturday is different. Saturday is about silence. Mark has nothing to say. Jesus died on Friday, and what is to come on Sunday with the empty tomb has yet to happen. We are caught between two worlds. Traditionally, Monday Thursday is dedicated to the Lord's Supper and the events of the Upper Room. But we've already been there two Sundays ago. We will get to the communion meal tonight, but it'll not be from the viewpoint of the Upper Room. Instead, it'll be about the reality of existing between two worlds. Our sacred meal will look back at the death of Jesus in remembrance and will look forward in hope of the resurrection. If we place ourselves within the story of Mark on Saturday, we know for certain that Jesus is dead. And along with that death are the de is the death of all of our assumptions. We assumed a certain outcome to his life. We were one of his disciples. We thought it would go a particular way. Needless to say, that assumption did not happen. We assumed that Jesus would somehow make all of the horrible circumstances that we encountered throughout the week, that he would somehow make them work out. He would like he'd do like he'd always done. You know, when the multitude was hungry, he performed a miracle, and he fed them from the bread and the fishes. When everyone's lives were in danger on the sea, he stood up and he calmed the winds, calmed the sea. When the desperate man came because his daughter was in the throes of death, he saw Jesus 
take that anguish and bring life once again into her life. He pretty much fixed everything that we ever encountered, all of the bad stuff that we ever saw, all of the heartache and the pain. Jesus dedicated himself to fixing it. He had done so much for so many, but he couldn't do it for himself, and we didn't expect that. We needed him to win. We wanted him to be the one as disciples in that day who we had hoped for. Instead, we witnessed the pompous smirks on the face of the Jewish elite who seemed to easily rid themselves of the one that everyone thought would actually end their reign of conceited abuse. They did it easily, almost like a fly meeting the fate of a fly swatter. Instead of seeing Jesus triumph over the Gentiles and elevate the nation of Israel, we see the power of the Roman Empire whose callous, heartless reign comes to bear and snuffs out his life. Human hatred, envy, jealousy, lust for power, arrogance, and injustice prevail. The one who represented love, died. That is the reality from yesterday's heartbreaking events. That's what went on on Friday. It is a reality that remains with us on this day of Saturday. Is there something more that tomorrow is going to bring? If we were part of the disciples, we wouldn't know yet. He spoke of something, something called a resurrection, but what really is that? How does that really change anything? Tonight we're caught between yesterday's reality of his brutal death and his failure against all of the things we thought he came to conquer. We're caught between that and the unknown promises of the future. We're caught between worlds. Where you and I are in the story is where we live life every day. We live with the knowledge of the reality of both Friday's pain and Sunday's victory over the grave. We live in that. We know what they didn't know. They hadn't gotten to Sunday yet. But we know Sunday's coming. We know the end of the story. And because we know, we believe that Jesus has changed everything through his death on the cross and his resurrection from the dead. The remedy to human sin, existing in the form of hatred and envy and jealousy and lust for power and arrogance and injustice, has been unleashed because of the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. And the promise of a world without tears and sorrow and pain is made certain to us through the powerful resurrection of Jesus from the grave. But it isn't here yet. We still have our tears. We still have our sorrow. Pain exists all around us. As we well know as a congregation, death still robs us of life as both Nova Zimmerman and Jack Green have passed away. We are caught between two worlds. Any assumptions that we might have had for, that life for us as Christians would be free from troubles are frequently and very quickly found to be untrue. We don't tiptoe through tulips. We stumble amid some flowers that are among the weeds and the thorns and the rocks and the potholes of the life that we live. We ask questions like, why do the wicked prosper? Why do bad things happen to good people? Why life seems to show no favoritism to those who are good and those who are righteous? It rains on the just and the unjust. Sometimes we even become weary in well-doing, cynical, hard, because 
we've been pained and scarred by all that's going on, and we lose our sense of mercy and compassion. Sometimes if we're not careful, we can become functional agnostics. We believe in God, but we don't really believe it makes any difference. Being caught between two worlds brings us alongside the desperate father who met Jesus on his descent from the Mount of Transfiguration. In front of him was Jesus and all of the miracles that he had performed on the ground, writhing in torture, was his son. He cries out, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Who hasn't been there? Friday's events and conclusion ultimately turn into Sunday's discovery of amazing wonder. I can't wait to celebrate it with you on Sunday. But we have to wait. Not wait in helplessness and despair, but wait in faith and confidence that God is doing something powerful in our world and in us, even though we can't always see it. Wait in heartfelt obedience, knowing that our efforts and good works are not in vain, that they make a difference in the world around us. Wait in hope-filled anticipation of the day when everything is going to be made new, when all things will be made right, and when what we see dimly and through a glass vaguely becomes clear and sharply focused. We long for that day. Scriptures inform us that we've been raised with Christ and seated in heavenly places. That's what it says we have been already, that we're citizens of the kingdom of heaven, that we're strangers and pilgrims on this earth, strangers and pilgrims to the life we see around us. Scriptures tell us that we're looking for something better, something lasting, and something born of heaven. We are citizens of one world living in another. Tonight we know that we're caught between those two worlds. Tonight we're going to gather at the Lord's table. It is a sacred reminder of the past, a reminder of the cost of our salvation in the death of our Lord Jesus. But we're also going to gather around this table and look forward into the future when the vision of the marriage supper of the Lamb and everyone coming from the north and the south and the east and the west gather together and celebrate the fullness of the kingdom. All while the heavens and the earth are restored to their glory. As those who are caught between two worlds, we come to the table tonight that represents the two worlds. Bread in a cup on one hand, the body and the blood of Christ on the other. Let us eat and let us drink tonight from the reality of Friday while we testify to the miracle of Sunday. Let us pray. Lord, help us to receive these words and to be faithful to both of the worlds in which we are called to live. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>
Jesus told his disciples of his earnest desire to eat the Passover meal with them before he suffered. A table is set before us so that we might once again share a sacred meal that provides for us a chance to reflect upon his sufferings and anticipate his glorious resurrection. Let us prepare our hearts to share in the bread of life and the cup of salvation. May the God of heaven and earth be with you. And also with you. Allow your hearts to find healing from the one who works all things after the counsel of his will. We bring our hearts to God who all things the of People of God, rejoice before the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and the beginning and the end. We rejoice in the one who was, who is, and who is to come. Glorious God, who upholds all things together, we reach into the past, you reach into the past, and you brought forth all creation through the word of your power. You formed us and then filled us with your breath, that we might bear your image to all of creation. out to us through your prophets. You offered us your holy words of life. You sustained us through your goodness, compassion, and faithfulness. Tonight we join with all of those who testify to your unfailing love. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of all faithfulness and God of all grace and mercy. All creation is filled with your glory. salvation to us, and blessed is your Holy Son, Jesus, our great Redeemer. He emptied himself of glory to be filled with our broken hopes and hearts. He chose the path of suffering pain so that we could know wholeness. He yielded his life to death that we might experience life in all of its fullness.
Let us pray. As we prepare to leave this gathering, may we do so ready to meet the challenges of living between two worlds. Renew within us, Lord God, a vision for the one who showed us the depth of his passion for your kingdom. Quicken our hearts to embrace the one who taught us to live in love and justice. Help us to see Jesus, who showed us the path of kingdom living, and who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. We are the people of God. Amen.